Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What's going on, guys? It is Daniel. We're back here again today. Today, I'm going to be explaining the question everybody's asked me Daniel, why did you become a Muslim? And I know this has been requested heavily for some time, and I've sort of been putting it off, partially because it's a lot of work to tell this story. It's it's not simple. It's not a simple answer. I've had people message me, you know, old friends message me, why are you Muslim now? And, you know, it's a multidimensional topic that I can take from many angles. There's a lot of things I can't explain, a lot of things I, I don't have words for. And uh, it's, just a long, it's just a long story. But for those of you that really want to know... Um, Bear with me here as I try to explain it, and uh, I, I will admit I do have uh, something I wrote up here in front of me, and that's just because, like I said, it's it's long. There's a lot to it, and I don't want to miss anything. It's important. It's an important. It could be an important story for somebody out there listening. And um, anyway, I digress. Um, you know, I tell people that when they ask me why did you become a Muslim. It's a decision that I made that was based on logic. It was based on reason, but it was also based on things that I can't describe. I don't have words for Some like, something like intuition and something along the lines of it's just life experience, just analyzing my life. And it also involved a lot of reflection and a lot of prayer. And so I guess I'll just take it from the beginning and we'll kind of address this somewhat chronologically because that's how it happened to me. And um, that's probably the best way to explain it so that you guys can also understand. So my name's Daniel. I was born in Missouri in America and I was born in a middle class family and I was raised well. You know, my parents loved me. They still love me. And, you know, as far as religion goes, I didn't really have much guidance, really any guidance at all, as far as religion goes. Um, now, I see this as kind of a blessing and a curse because it did give me this clean slate to work from where I was able to go out and really find my own truth without anything else being forced onto me. However, it was also a curse because I had to, I had to search and I had to learn a lot of lessons the hard way, um, you know, to, to, to find the truth and involved a lot of hardship and a lot of being lost, you know, a lot of time lost. So, however, you know, God knows best, God knows best. And I'm grateful for my journey and I'm grateful for where my journey led me, where I am today. So I'll say my earliest memory of God must have been around the age of five or six. Um, and I remember praying with my sister, um, older sister, and we'd pray together before we go to sleep. And I remember she would kind of lead the prayer. And I'm not sure, I, st I haven't talked to her about this uh, since. I don't know where she learned this from, but I remember praying together with her, praying to God and, and asking God that our family is going to be okay, our family's safe and everything going to be good. And I remember it felt good to do that. It felt good. There was something honest about it. There was something true about it and comforting. And, um, you know, as I grew up, most of the people I went to school with we're Christian, some form of Christian. A lot of them were Protestant Christians, some Catholics, you know, here and there. Um, and I myself had a few experiences visiting churches, you know, after being invited. But, you know, the, the, the vibe never felt right to me, even as a kid. It, it seemed, honestly, it seemed silly and it seemed inauthentic. I felt like you guys don't all really believe this, do you? Really? It's, it, it, seems, it seems silly to me, honestly. Um, and uh, as far as Islam goes, I had 
I will say no exposure to Islam as a kid. Really none. I grew up, like I said, in Missouri, in the middle of America. All my peers were white, basically. There was like one Asian in my class. In the whole grade in my school, there was like one Asian, a few black kids here and there. Very large lack of diversity. Um, you know, I did probably hear, you know, here and there I probably heard about Muslims or Islam, but it was mostly in the context of the war or terrorism. And to me, all that stuff seemed unimportant. And so I mostly just ignored these kinds of conversations. Uh, getting a little bit older, you know, at the age of eight years old or so, my parents got divorced. And I didn't really know how to feel about that when I was a kid. Um, but looking back and knowing what I know now, it, it it very clearly happened because a lack of foundation in my parents' marriage. And um, yeah, like I said, we just had no religious conversations in the house at all. And it's quite tragic what what happened there, but for me it was just kind of like, okay, it is what it is. I didn't really get sad about it as far as I can remember, but we'll revisit this again later. For now, it's not that important. Um, at the age of 12 or 13, I remember I would watch a lot of atheist videos on YouTube and you know, like stuff like Richard Dawkins, you know, that kind of stuff. And it made sense to me, I'd say at the time, it gave me, I guess, a way to respond to the environment around me of Christians and people that believe in God. And, um, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't really relate to them. And so I got like a surface level understanding of these atheistic arguments. And it was, I guess, somehow comforting. And otherwise, I just put the question of, where did we all where did all of this come from in the back of my in the back of my mind now getting a bit older past adolescence once i got to be about 17 years old this is when my spiritual journey really began and of course cliche you know when i think about it it had to start about the time <clears throat> i first started smoking marijuana <laughs> um you know, I had a, I had experiences with smoking this plant, and I'm not saying it, it, that's good. Of course not, um, but that's just the reality of my story. You know, I, I I remember just kind of being guided to do yoga and this kind of stuff, and that led to learning about Buddhism. You know, I'm reading a bunch of books from Alan Watts, Thich Nhat Hanh. I'm doing kundalini yoga in my room. I'm just trying to learn everything I can about this. And it's it, this is sort of like me opening up into the world, the this, this spiritual world, and thinking, oh, okay, there is more than I can see. There's more, there, there's more than what I can see going on here. And I sort of admitted to myself that there, there's something, something out there. I, don't, I didn't know what it was, but I was beginning to wonder and beginning to want to know and um you know i started at this time i started following like a strict vegan diet i started militantly fasting for 20 plus hours a day i would only eat in a small window in the evening i would use drugs like lsd and mushrooms every so often and oftentimes you know, i come out of those experiences completely traumatized and confused only to come to the conclusion that the way I solved that issue is to take more drugs. And you can imagine how that went. Um, I ended up growing dreadlocks. I would only eat fruit. And I even joined a rewilding nature cult in Costa Rica. So as you can tell, this is a very crazy stage in my life. And there's a lot of stories there that I could go into, but I think I've said enough about this stage of my life for you to kind of get the spirit of what was going on. And really looking back, it's kind of hard to describe what that period was like because it was just so crazy. And to be honest, it I don't remember it that well. And that might be because I was 
partially starving the entire time. I didn't, I didn't really eat much back then. Um, at some point in this, in this crazy Eastern idea searching phase, I found myself in Thailand and I'd say it was here in Thailand that I'd sort of hit a rock bottom, um, with these Eastern ideas. And it started to seem like everything I did didn't work. And because of that, I started to think that it didn't matter what I did and nothing at all mattered. And as you can imagine, this put me in sort of a dark place, not sort of dark, a very dark place. And I found myself kind of cycling in and out of mania and in and out of depression. And I would say things really started turning around when I started fixing my diet, actually. I started drinking milk and eating meat again. Before that, I was like strictly vegan. Actually, yeah, it's, it's a long story. And um, I put on, I remember I put on like 20 kilograms in around a month. It was crazy. I, I started going to the gym again. And then I joined a Muay Thai gym. I started fighting or training to fight. And then I became obsessed with training. And I would train multiple times a day and then around a year later, I was suddenly, it seemed like suddenly I was fighting on national television against champions. And I think around this time, you could say I started to, to man up and <clears throat> I started maturing and taking things seriously and taking responsibility for things. And at some point around this time, I was exposed to Orthodox Christianity and it piqued my curiosity because it seemed Compared to the Christianity that I saw when I was growing up, this Orthodox Christianity I'd never heard of, and so that piqued my curiosity. And then when I looked into it, it seemed sober and and practical compared to the Christianity that I saw growing up. And it, it seemed to be actually rooted in something rather than like so wishy-washy and like people playing guitars and drums on the stage. It's like, where does, where does all that come from? You know what I mean? And looking back, uh, you know, long story short, I became Orthodox Christian and, and um, all this. But looking back, I, I realized that I very clearly rushed into this and I didn't ask enough questions. And I think that was due to me not really being in a balanced state to begin with. And, you know, I had all this new testosterone in my body and I was so fed up with these Eastern ideas that didn't make any sense and came to no conclusion. I was yearning. I was hungry for some law and some pattern in my life. And so I welcomed Christianity without much questioning or protest as far as like the creed and the theology goes. I was just kind of like, okay, yeah, like, um, whatever. <laughs> like, I don't even care. I just, you know, I want to, I just wanted to be responsible and for something. And Regardless, I was going to church, you know, every Sunday and uh, I was even started studying at the seminary to potentially become a priest myself. And once I started getting deeper into the studies, I started really asking myself, like, do I actually believe this? Do I really actually believe this because if I do, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to become a priest, go all the way. And if I don't, then I need to reassess my life, right? And the more I thought about this, do I really believe this or not? The answer was no. Um, and I'll say that's because that was because it seemed like it didn't seem like it was. The whole thing was centered around uh, what they call Holy Communion. And the Holy Communion, you know, it's when they eat the bread and the wine. And that's the whole point of the whole Sunday liturgy, which was the main point of being an Orthodox Christian was to participate in the liturgy and the liturgy liturgy was leading up to the communion. And what is the communion? Well, they say it's you're literally eating the flesh and the blood of God. Hmm. And so I thought about this. Hmm. Do I really believe that? Does that seem logical to me? Does that make sense to me? Does that seem true to me? And, the answer was no, as you can tell. Um, so, you know, I had to, I had to reassess. I had to completely um, 
reassess my life at that at that point and um i realized i probably shouldn't be involving myself with that in that religion if i don't believe in it so i slowly stopped going to church and kind of excommunicated myself from the church there and thus beginning another phase of my life another chapter of my life again being lost i will say i was i was quite lost and but the difference is the unique part of, of this part of my life is that I'll say I knew that there was some kind of right and wrong. And, but the thing was, I had no foundation for that right and wrong. It's like, I knew that there was right and wrong, but I didn't know what it, what it was and what that could be based then. And so what ended up happening is I knew that there was right and wrong, but I just kind of ended up rationalizing in my mind what I thought was right and what I thought was wrong based on my own reason and really my own desires. Um, and of course, being 23 or 24 years old at this time, I live alone in Thailand. You can only imagine. It didn't go well. It didn't go well following my desires and rationalizing whatever I want to do. I, it didn't work. It didn't work. And, you know, as you all know, when you try to drown... When you try to fill a hole inside of yourself with worldly things, it doesn't matter what it is, anything of this world, it only causes that empty hole to grow larger and larger and larger. And eventually you kind of lose yourself. You will eventually hit some kind of rock bottom and hopefully you turn around. Um, And so this was what was happening to me. My life was just not um, really going well. And I mean, it wasn't wasn't uh i didn't become like suicidal or or anything but i just had this feeling but there's more there's something more right and little did i know this whole time i'm i'm actually being led by god and so then it then it all begins right I, i first became curious about islam when i saw a friend of mine posting youtube videos about it and i'm sure most of you guys know my friend bobby's perspective on youtube and we'd been friends already for a year or two and we'd had a few conversations here and there. I, we always were kind of into the same things and resonating with the same kind of things. And I respected him a lot. And I thought he had good, a good uh, rationality. And he was very articulate. He was just a solid guy that I respected and, and trusted. And um, we always liked similar things. So I thought when he was looking into Islam, I thought, that's weird i just didn't expect it and then i thought like why is he doing that like you know islam is is um dangerous right it's not true right so why is he looking into it but then i thought well why isn't it true and why why is it dangerous like really i wanted to know why and so out of my own curiosity i tried to find the answer why why is it why is it not true and why is it dangerous? And so I started watching some of the videos he's watching. And I started reading the Quran. And I would watch some more videos based on a few questions I would get from the previous video. And really for about four or five months, like starting off slowly and just kind of lighthearted, not really taking it too serious. By the end of this four or five months, I was obsessively researching Islam. And I'm I'm not over exaggerating. It was quite obsessive it, to the point where it's beginning to be difficult to finish my work, <laughs> the work that I'm supposed to be doing to, to to have a livelihood. I was being so distracted by my curiosity of Islam that it was it was hard to to do my work. I was so compelled and hungry. I'm thinking, well, what about this? Okay, and then I have to know. Well, what about that? Okay. I'm, research, research, research. Sometimes it would take me an hour to find an answer, sometimes five minutes, sometimes a few days. And I have to ponder about the answer. And I'd think about, "Mm, any more questions? There must be more questions. Okay, here's another question. I got to find the answer to that one. I had a lot of questions. I had a lot of questions. And it seemed like every question I had, there was a good answer for. You know, what, what's Islam based on? What's Islam based on? Okay, the Quran. Okay, well, who wrote the Quran? I read, I read, nobody wrote it, it's from God. Well, how do we know it's from God? 
And then I researched, well, it's impossible for a man to have written. Well, the Quran's full of dangerous teachings and, and, and violence, right? And then I research, I read it. No, it's actually full of clear and logical solutions to all the problems that I had in my own life and all the problems I see that humanity faces as a whole. And it sounds cliche, but it seemed like everything started to clear up for me. Thinking all the way back to the beginning of my life. And when I started searching spiritually at 17 years old, I could see how the teachings of the Quran, the teachings of Islam could apply to, to my life and how it applied to the whole world, not only my life, but the whole world, how it was just this key, the, the, the answer that, that we all needed. Wow. <laughs> Needless to say, this was, a, this was a humbling experience for me. And it didn't happen like in an instant, right? This was, this was um, months of of God speaking to me and giving me parables and signs in my own life and research. And I realized that we all want and need and crave a heavenly law by which we can use as guidelines on how to live our life in the best way possible. And that law coming directly from none other than the one who created us. And only a select few get to understand that and even less choose to submit to that law. And the more I thought about it, I, I knew I wanted to be one of those people that submit. And so I took Shahada on December 3rd, 2022, Alhamdulillah. And since then, my life has completely changed. And... When I say that, I don't mean that my life is easy now or it's like perfect or sunshine, rainbows all the time because it's not. But I now have guidelines from which to live my life and guide my life. And I have a direct connection with the most merciful, the most gracious, the all-knowing, powerful creator of everything. And to me, that's priceless. So that's my story. That's why I became a Muslim. Hopefully I answered um, all your questions. If not, pl please feel free to write down in the comments any more questions you have about why I became a Muslim. And inshallah, I will answer them. May Allah bless you generously for watching this video. May Allah bless you generously for watching this video. And inshallah, we will see you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum.